Hey, you are back so fast, I know, because you can't wait to finish off your PSLE science, right? So, yes, this is the very last one, okay? I promise you, very last one. After you learn about photosynthesis, I have nothing else to impart to you. Everything else is on your own. You have to do the assessments really, really well, getting the knowledge from us, whatever you've learned in school, right? Let's look at photosynthesis. We know the rate of photosynthesis can be affected by three reasons. Okay, firstly, you know you they need sunlight, they need carbon dioxide, and they need what's the other one? Can you tell me from here? We'll look at number three. See how many of you already guessed it. Okay, so the first one is nothing but light. Second one is carbon dioxide concentration is required the more the availability of carbon dioxide, the better they will photosynthesize and the temperature, sometimes they, if it's too hot, they can die straight away. So you need an optimal temperature for them to do. If it's too cold in winters, they cannot make food as well. Okay, so it's too cold. So temperatures have to be just right. Now, what is the word that's missing? How strong the light is will refer will refer to the word intensity okay so the light intensity how strong the light is your sun how far away is it okay even though it's very far away the sun's rays and the sun's energy is really really strong really powerful that intensity is quite good enough because that's how hot we feel every day just purely from the sun yeah but However, in most of our exam questions, we will see the light being, or the plant being lighted up using artificial light. For example, just a torch or a, or a lamp, just to see if the intensity affects the photosynthesis process because we, we are able to control the intensity given out by our lamp that we use. We cannot control the intensity of the sun. So that's why in experiments, we try to use artificial light to test how good or how bad they photosynthesize. So these three have to be taken in, into consideration. We start with number one, how do they respond to light intensity? I think you know, but a graph will help us to understand better. Let's look at the graph first before we look at the text, okay? We always study data using graph better because it shows us the ultimate big picture without having to write too many words. So this is a quick way. Intensity of light as it increases, so you increase and increase, you use a torch, you make it brighter and brighter and brighter. The plant makes its photosynthesis process better and better. Rate of photosynthesis gets higher, meaning it does a better job of making food because it's got more light, more food, more light, more food. Till a time where you continue to increase the intensity, it says, even if you give me more light, I can't make any more food. That's the maximum I can make. I've gone the fastest. It's just like I ask you to run a 100 meter race and then I say, I give you $5. Can you run? Yes, then you run. I give you $10, you run a little bit faster. I give you $15, you say, oh, I'm going to run even faster for you. And then now you've reached your limit. That's the fastest you can run. So even if I give you $100, you're not going to be able to run faster than the fastest that you have run. So the plan says I've done my best. That's the fastest I can make food. So this is the end. So after that, even though you are producing light for him, he cannot go further than that, maxed out. So in words, let's complete this quickly. As light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis increases too. But there is a limit, right? As light intensity is further, increased further, further from this point, the rate of photosynthesis eventually reaches its limit. So I think you understand what limit is based on the fact or the example I gave you about running. Let's look at carbon dioxide concentration. The same thing. You give him more carbon dioxide, he does better. It's like giving him food. Earlier I gave you money, now I give you food. I said I buy you one McDonald's you run for me and then I give you two burgers, you run for me and then you say, even if you buy the whole McDonald's for me, I cannot run anymore because that's the maximum I've run. So there you go, the same thing, looks very similar just that it's a little bit curved. So, so you can see 
what does it mean? Okay, all, if it curves, it also means something here is different from something here. This is a faster rate than the yellow because yellow is slowing down. You can see it's a curve and then this rate is very slow. So that means this is shooting up and then slowing down because from here to here it's actually coming to a zero where it cannot go any further, just like the one earlier. So it's very similar but a curve actually means a lot more because it's already starting to slow down from the point at which it's not straight anymore. Once it starts curving, means it's not going the same rate as before, slowing down to a halt as you reach. So maybe the line shouldn't be here. Maybe I should have the red line over here. So this is very fast rate, slower rate, and then totally nothing, and then comes to a standstill. So let's write that out in words to also understand that better. An increase in the carbon dioxide concentration increases photosynthesis, obviously, because that's the same. As further, a further concentration increase causes a rapid what? reduction. Okay, this is the part we're talking about in the yellow part. Maybe I should write it in yellow. I'll do that in just a while, try to change the color. Then maybe we can correlate this yellow part with this yellow part, okay? Which eventually reaches its limit. Okay, now it's time for me to pick a yellow pen. Now it's time for me to pick a yellow pen so that you can see that the yellow region of the graph refers to this. This is really a reduction in the rate of photosynthesis. Very important, okay? This part is very, very important because it's not the same. Just go think about it. Why is this not the same as this? Okay. The reason is because here, yes, it's still a straight line. Here, it bends off because that means it's beginning to reduce the speed at which it's producing or photosynthesizing. The last one is temperature affects photosynthesis as well. But this curve is a lot more difficult for me to explain to you. Oh no, how do I do it? Maybe you can explain to me. Okay, so since you know how graphs are explained, tell me. As temperature increases, well, this is a curve as well. So it's not a straight line. Look at the straight line versus a curve. So you can see initially it's very slow. Then the line goes up very fast. Okay, so this part is fast and then it slows down again. So this part is slow. So this is the yellow part. This is the red part that goes really fast like earlier. Then, of course, got the yellow part that is slowing down. Come, let's compare the earlier one. See? Fast, slow. Okay, same thing. Fast, slow. So this is the part that copies the earlier one. So if this is slowing down, if this way, this way is speeding up. That's why this is fast. So from here, it's slow, it's speeding up. Then it's very fast. Then it's slowing down. So this is how you describe the rate so this is very slow speeding up picking up speed very good and then slowing down and let's stop there first we don't want to talk about the rest okay so rate of photosynthesis picks up speed as the temperature becomes this is zero right so at zero degrees very cold nothing rate of photosynthesis is nothing it's basically at zero still it doesn't go up as it goes further and further we'll be getting warmer 20 degrees 30 degrees and then Oh, it gets better and then at optimal level 30 degrees and 40 degrees this is where the red line is so somewhere along here will be the optimum temperature for photosynthesis to take place between 20 to 40 maybe so this area should be maybe 20 to 40 and then after 40 it gets too hot so it slows down again and it doesn't give you back any more food photosynthesis really slows down so anything above 40 is slowing down Let's just give it another five more maybe 45 and that's it the highest and then straight away 46 drops down to give you nothing in terms of photosynthesis no food and the plant says no it's too hot for me in fact i may even die because i'm it's too hot so you can't go into this range. So try to work within the red range. You get the best photosynthesis. Okay, let's 
write it down or rather I will just talk and you can just try and memorize no not memorize just try and absorb because just continue to look here as I read okay as the temperature increases the rate of photosynthesis increases it does but slowly as the temperature is increased further the rate of photosynthesis eventually eventually what declines and becomes zero this part okay too high a temperature causes the plant to die so that is what we're trying to talk about okay so i'm not going to fill it up this time i'm just going to let you absorb this information based on this i think the explanation here is much better than having to write everything down but if you want to write down have a practice go and write down later by coming back to this slide again 